Much love and respect to everybody that's tuned in right now. Thanks for uh, joining me again. Another presentation here. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Just want to read uh, from a particular book that uh, we read only a little bit from before. So I want to read the whole book. It's not really long. Uh, before I read that book, though, just you know, to add correlation to uh, previous uh, presentations that we've done, previous research regarding the so-called uh, Atlantis you know, the island of Atlantis, you know, what we've shared before, what we're looking at right now is uh, a map, an official historic map, Atlantis Insula, Atlantis Insula. First of all, what, what is Insula? All right, online etymology dictionary says, in Latin, literally an island, all right? Insula is literally an island, all right? It's literally an island, all right? So again, we were just looking at this Atlantis Insula or the island of Atlantis historic map of 1669 by Nicholas Sampson huh they sell it on uh, Amazon as you can see here historic map historic it doesn't say pseudo or anything historic map works residential genealogy Atlantis Insula Nicholas Sampson antiquarian all right, again, maps, etc. Atlantis Insula, 1600. Atlantis Insula, right? And what does it keep showing you? The Americas, right? The Americas. Just real quick again. Atlantis Insula, Paulus and Swain Auction Gallery. This is a historic map. All right, Samson's map of Atlantis in California. All right, Samson's map. This is a little closer we can get of the map so we can zoom in I just want to show you guys that it literally says Atlantis right here in the bottom Insula so Atlantis Island the whole of Americas it even says that the Caribbean is the Hesperides Hispaniola Hesperides Hispaniol Hespa Hispa Hesperides Hispaniola Hespa Hespa the Hesperides are the paradise place to the Greeks and all that We've been correlating that we've read many books on that um and again this is divided into i guess the odyssey of homer and the lands they were talking about like right here it says autochthons the autochthons are right here the elapsipus the menesus the aries um all right tule island the isthmus atlantidis all right, Atlantis, the Isthmus, again, Atlantis Insula, or the island of Atlantis, all right? So nobody's making this up. You can look up the official, there you go, that's the name of the map, Atlantis Insula by Nicolau Samson. We, we go to this book, it's called New Atlantis, begun by the Lord Verulam, Viscount St. Albans, I look him up, <laughs> and continued by R.H. Esquire, wherein set forth a platform of monarchical government with a pleasant intermixture of diverse, diverse rare inventions and wholesome customs fit to be introduced into all kingdoms and states and commonwealths. This is written in 1660. All right, 1660. As you can see down here, 1660. And I just want to show this real quick. To my most sacred sovereign, Charles II, King of Great Britain, France, and Ireland, defender of the faith. All right. So 
this is not just anybody writing anything uh you know silly they're actually writing to a king they take this kind of stuff serious back in the 1660s all right i'm going to like chapter one of this book it says here the argument of the new atlantis as it was begun by lord bacon they're talking about francis bacon and some sailors getting lost from peru to china we're going to go to this part right here and zoom in it says here how the great atlantis which we call america all right we're reading right here let's go to the beginning of the paragraph the next day's conference relates how that though they lived remote and unknown to all other nations they had the knowledge of the languages books and affairs of those that lie at farthest distance because they were talking about that they had gotten lost in the uh, southeast asia the solomon islands place area over there and how they had the knowledge of ancient atlantis a distant place how the great atlantis which we call america atlantis which we call america they wrote this in the 1600s all right to king charles ii francis bacon and all this is a book they took serious back then primary source they're letting you know straight up correlating with the map we just saw how the great atlantis which we call america abounded ones in tall ships america had tall ships how the people of peru through the south sea and those of mexico through the atlantic to the mediterranean sea did both in 10 years space make two great expeditions upon ben salem all right the people of what america had very tall ships aka atlantis all right atlantis in america the navigators of the ancient world by ivor sap and george Erickson. We've read from this book many times before. I'm going to go to a quick chapter real quick. We're in chapter 6. It says here, Plato's Atlantis from myth to reality, all right? Real place. We ain't talking about myths. So-called Atlantis. 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 The Latin Greek. They added the tis. Where was the Atlantis of myth? Well, if you are presently upright in any part of the Americas, you are standing on it, all right? Where's Atlantis? Well, if you're upright in any part of the Americas, you are standing on it, okay? You're standing on it. Plato tells us in the Timaeus and again in the Unfinished Critias that Atlantis was a real, it was real, not imaginary island, continent, island continent big and that it was located beyond the pillars of hercules the straits of gibraltar in or across the atlantic ocean i just want to show you real quick we actually you know have read from this book also many many times in previous videos make sure you get all the previous presentations if you can uh have the time to catch up you know just go back and work your way up atlantis the antediluvian world by ignatius uh donnelly and again, they, this is, you know, people will call this pseudo, but, you know, they have this, like it says here, presented to the libraries, the University of Toronto by Willard, Willard G. Oxtoby. It's in their libraries. It's not in their fictional uh, aisle. It's in their historic aisle. This book actually has many sources to back up what it's saying. So just verify the sources with facts that there was some kind of a, a island called Atlantics on the western side of, of, of Europe and Africa. You know, we know it was just talking about America, even if a, a small, even if a part sank, it was attached to us. It was part of this part of the world, this side of the world. It, it made commerce and traded with the other colonies on this side in Central America, South America, North America. All right. So it was part of this kingdom over here. Whatever happened, whatever was done in this so-called part uh, called Atlantis, right, with the technology and something, the people doing something they weren't supposed to, right? Now, that's a different story. Who were these Atlantis, right? But um, either way, they were over here, right? So he he shows you a lot of that, um, but he doesn't try to connect it with the mainland. He just tries to say these are colonies from the island that went down, but it's all the same. All right, now, it says, the gods of the Phoenicians, also kings of Atlantis. All right, we're just talking about the Americas, man. So why would they have, why would these Phoenicians have Atlantean gods, right? 
if they're from the Mediterranean, all the way over there has nothing to do with them, right? So not, now it says not alone were the gods of the Greeks, because they just came from talking about the gods, the Greek gods being Atlanteans, right? He broke it down uh, in the previous chapter. So not alone were the gods of the Greeks the deified kings of Atlantis, but we find that the mythology of the Phoenicians was drawn from the same source. They just getting it from here, all these nations, especially the Greeks. All right, when they're talking about Atlantis and the Western Ethiopians and all that, they're just talking about you over here. All right, when Her um, Herodotus is talking about that the ancestors of the Egyptians, they come from a distant Western land where the original people came from. They're just talking about you, all right? This is things you can look up. For instance, we find it in the Phoenician cosmogony that the Titans, the Titans or Giants, Rephaim, we get this in the Bible, Rephaim, derived their origin from the Phoenician gods, Agrus and Agrotus. This connects the Phoenicians with that island in the remote west, the remote west, far away in the west, in the midst of an ocean, where according to the Greeks, the Titans dwell, the, the, the Giants. Now, we know in the biblical story, Jehoshua, uh, Moses sent Jehoshua or Joshua to spy on the land of Canaan and what did he find? He found giants. He found giants. All right. Phoenicians are giants. All right. Who was in the land of Canaan? Giants, Phoenicians, Canaanites, the Incas as well, the Mayas, the Olmec say when they reached their land, there was giants there that they had to fight, that they had to remove. All right. The Olmec talk about this. The Incas the Mayas, all right, they talk about giants being in their land, all right, this corroborates and having to remove them, okay, according to Sanconiaton, Uranus was the son of Octocton, and according to Plato, Octocton was one of the ten kings of Atlantis, talking about an Octocton, original man, he was in where, America, Atlantis, slash Atlantis, he married his sister G, he is the Uranus of the Greeks, Uranus. He is the Uranus, the same Uranus, Uranus, same, who was the son of Gaia, the earth, whom he married. The Phoenicians tell us Uranus had, by G, four sons. Ilus, which was El, who is called Kronos, all right? And Betilus, Beth El, and Dagon. Dagon, the Dogon, the Dagon. Haven't I told you this man something to do with corn? Didn't I tell you this meant corn, which signifies bread corn or cornbread, bread corn. Is corn not a native plant to America? Huh? Who are these mysterious Dogon? Where do they come from? Were these Phoenicians that got kicked out of Canaan? All right. What does their name resemble corn so much? Dogon. Corn. And Atlas Tamus? Atlas Tamus, are we talking about Thoth? The famous Thoth, our friend Thoth. Talking about the hijack here, the king of hijacks. Here, again, we have the name of two other kings of Atlantis. These four sons probably represented four races, the offspring of the earth, probably. The Greek Uranus was the father of Kronos and the ancestor of Atlas. The Phoenician god Uranus had a great many other wives. His wife G was jealous. They quarreled and he attempted to kill the children he had by her. This is the legend which the Greeks told of Zeus and Juno. Same story passed down to other gods. In the Phoenician mythology, Kronos raised a rebellion against Uranus and after a great battle dethroned him. In the Greek legend, it is Zeus who attacks and overthrows his father, Kronos. Uranus had a daughter called Astarte, Ashtoreth, Easter, another called Rhea, and Dagon. After he had found out bread corn and the plow was called Zeus Arostrios. Jesus Christos, Jesus Arostrios. Uh, you see? See what we're getting into? Zeus, just add a J-E here. His head, Zeus. All right, not Joshua. We find also in the Phoenician legends mention made of Poseidon, founder and king of Atlantis. Poseidon, king of Atlantis, or uh, yeah, the island in America. Cronus gave Attica to his daughter Athena. 
As in the Greek legends, in a time of plague, he sacrificed his son to Uranus and circumcised, circumcised himself and compelled his allies to do the same thing. It would thus appear that this singular rite practiced, as we have seen by the Atlantidae, so the Atlanteans did that, right, Americans of the old and new worlds, the Egyptians did it, they were over here too, the Phoenicians did it, they were over here too, the Hebrews were over here, the Ethiopians, what do you mean, Ethiopians, people of dark skin, the Mexicans, the Mexicans, what are you talking about, the Mexica people, and the red men of America, so these are different, the Mexicans and the red men of America are different. You see how they're separating that? Well, all these people were circumcised. Hmm. And they all had something to do with America. Right? Isn't that a coincidence? As we might have expected to Atlantis. Cronus visits the different regions of the habitable world. He gave Egypt as a kingdom to the god. Tot, tot, tot. Go over there. So when we read the emerald tablets of Thoth, right? Or the, uh, the emerald green tablets of Atlantis, right? written by thought he tells you straight up he was in atlantis there was some kind of cataclysm volcanic he he's described like a volcanic cataclysm all right even in the uh, egyptian uh, book of the dead they write that Thoth came from a city state a city and a lake in the lake it was driven by fire it got dark and fire right like a volcanic eruption he lived in the city in a lake wasn't tenochtitlan isn't it in a lake wasn't it built in a lake Where's the green beast from? Look at the green beast, right? Thought is the beast, the green beast, Central America, America, the green beast. All right. So again, he gave Egypt as a kingdom to the god Thoth, who had invented the alphabet. He invented the. I thought it was the Phoenicians. Remember, we just got on the other website. It was the Phoenicians. So Thoth is a Phoenician. Thoth spoke Paleo Hebrew. Thoth spoke Paleo Hebrew. Ancient, ancient, ancient picto, pictograph. The Egyptians called him Thoth, and he was represented among them as the god of letters, the clerk of the underworld, bearing a tablet, pen, palm branch. Underworld, like Anubis. That's why we got Hermanubis, because we know Thoth is Hermes. Hermes, Hermanubis is Thoth. It's all the same. It's just different epithets of Thoth. All right? Barony tablet pen and a palm branch. This not only connects the Phoenicians with Atlantis, but shows the relations of Egyptian civilization to both Atlantis and the Phoenicians. It's all connected. You see, this is all right here. We're talking about the true old world. Atlantis slash Amaruka. There can be no doubt that the royal personages who formed the gods of Greece were also the gods of the Phoenicians. Same. We have seen the Atacton of Plato reappearing in the Atacton of the Phoenicians, the Atlas of Plato in the Atlas of the Phoenicians, the Poseidon of Plato in the Poseidon of the Phoenicians, while the kings of Mestor and Menesus of Plato are probably the gods Misor and Aminus of the Phoenicians. Sanctonian tells us after narrating all the discoveries by which the people advanced to civilization that the Kabiri set down their records of the past by the command of the god Hot, and they delivered them to their successors and to foreigners of whom one was Osiris, Os Osiris, the inventor of the three letter, the brother of Chua, who is called the first Phoenician. Uh, and this is in Lournemont and Cavalier, Ancient History of the East, Volume 2, page 228. All right, so remember that T A A U T, Tot, is the Phoenician Tot, same person. This is how they wrote it, same. All right. This will show that the first Phoenician came long after this line of the kings or gods and that he was a foreigner, all right? Remember now, he was a foreigner. The first Phoenician god or king, he was a foreigner as compared with them, and therefore that it could not have been the Phoenicians proper who made the several inventions narrated by St. Coniata, but some other race whom, for whom the Phoenicians might have been descended, all right? Descended, they were descended. And in the delivery of their records of the foreigner Osiris, the god of Egypt, we have another evidence that Egypt derived her civilization from Atlantis. Egypt from Atlantis. Egypt to Mary was in Atlantis. The Semitic languages also are all var varieties of one form of speech. Though we do not know that primitive language from which the Semitic dialects diverge, they don't know, so how can they say? 
where it comes from. They don't know. They just know it's all similar. They know they're all similar and related. Yet we know that at one time such language must have must have existed, that one mother tongue. All right, we're talking about in Atlantis in America. We cannot derive Hebrew from Sanchrist or Sanchrist from Hebrew. All right, they're not telling you that it Hebrew came out of Sanchrist because they try to say Sanchrist is the oldest. Or oh, that Sanchrist from Hebrew or that Sanchrist came out of Hebrew, but there seems some some similarity there. There has to be a common uh, language somewhere there that was in Atlantis. But we can well understand how both may have proceeded from one common source. They are both channels supplied from one river, and they carry, though not always on the surface, floating materials of language, which ca challenge comparison and have already yielded satisfactory results to careful analysis. Outlines of Philosophy of History, Volume 1. All right, this is studies people have done. They know that Sanchrist and Hebrew are the same. Didn't I tell you the Nagas? Who's the ancient Nagas? Who founded the whole Naga thing, the whole teachings? It was Prince Maya. Do you remember my Naga video? Untold Ancient American Truth, I believe part six or seven. All right. It was Prince Maya who brought all this knowledge and civilization to Hindustan, India, the, the other India, Hindustan. All right. And we see Sanchrist and Hebrew are similar. We're talking about Paleo Hebrew, Paleo, ancient pictograph Hebrew. Right. They call it Hebrew, but, you know, just the way we're referencing. There was an ancient tradition among the Persians that the Phoenicians migrated from the shores of the Erathian Sea. And this has been supposed to mean the Persian Gulf. All right. It was supposed. It's not, though. So remember, the Phoenicians migrated from somewhere else. All right. But there was a very old city, Erythia, in the utter ruin in the time of travel, which was built in some ancient age, long before the founding of Gades near that side of that town on the Atlantic coast of Spain. May not this town of Erythia have given its name to the adjacency? And this may have been the starting point of the Phoenicians and their European migration. So they're saying instead of that being the location where they began, is that the location they got to first in Spain and then did their European migrations from there. It would even appear that there was an island of Erythia. In the Greek mythology of the 10th labor of Hercules, consisted in driving away the cattle of Gerion, who lived in the island of Erythia, an island somewhere in the remote west, in the remote west, beyond the pillars of Hercules, in the Atlantic Ocean. That's where Erythia was. Talking about America, the Phoenicians, the real Erythia, the real Erythia was a remote island the west beyond the pillars of hercules okay this is from murray's mythology page 257 hercules stole the cattle from this remote oceanic island and returning drove them through iberia ga over the alps and through italy it is probable that a people emigrating from the erythian sea that is from the atlantic first gave their name to a town on the coast of spain and at a later date to the persian gulf as we have seen the name of york carried from England to the banks of Hudson and then to the Arctic Circle. So they're saying they carried that name with them to Europe and Spain and all these places and named it that from here. The builders of the Central American cities are reported to have been a bearded race. The Phoenicians in common with the Indians practice human sacrifices to a great extent. Hmm. So who are these Indians that were doing it too? You know, we got to stop grouping these people together. We know when they talk about Phoenicians, they're grouping already people together like Canaanites, Hamites, Moabites, a lot of these Jebusites. All right, we're going to read that. All right. So they're grouping a lot of people together. And we know that a lot of these people, even in the Bible, say that they did sacrifice, right? They were doing things, you know, that they weren't, they shouldn't have been doing. All right. So it says the Phoenicians in common with the Indians practice human sacrifice to a great extent. So when you hear stories of uh, these nations over here in America doing human sacrifice. So which nations were they? Are we talking about the so-called Phoenicians that were here that settled in our in, in the lands of Shem? That settled in the lands of Shem and in, in the land that was not given to them. And, and then Joshua had to drive them out because they were doing all kinds of crazy stuff like human sacrifices. They worship fire. 
and water adopted the names of the animals whose skins they wore. Skins they wore, they wore skins. That is to say, they had the totemic system telegraphed by means of fires, poisoned the arrows, offered peace before beginning battle, and used drums. Bancroft's native races. All right, so check this out. So Bancroft, we have that book. Real good historian, a lot of good sources in his book. All right, he even referenced that the Phoenicians had a lot of similarities to some of the Indian nations here. The extent of country covered by the commerce of the Phoenicians represents to some degree the area of the old Atlantean Empire. Their colonies and trading posts extended east and west from the shores of the Black Sea through the Mediterranean to the west coast of Africa and of Spain and around to Ireland and England, while from north to south they ranged from the Baltic to the Persian Gulf. They touched every point where civilization in later ages made its appearance. Strabo estimated that they had 300 cities along the west coast of Africa. When Columbus sailed to discover a new world or rediscover an old one, he took his departure from a Phoenician seaport founded by the great race 2,500 years previously. The Phoenicians had already been in the Iberian Peninsula, right? They had previously been driven out. Remember, they had been driven out of Canaan. So they had went over to that side. Remember, they asked for permission to settle northwest africa over there and they also settled in the iberian peninsula a lot of the uh, british isles they settled in all those areas his so-called phoenicians this atlantean sailor with his phoenician features sailing from an atlantean port simply reopened the path of commerce and colonization which had been closed when plato's island sunk in the sea you see so he's there saying columbus was an atlantean descendant of a phoenician Talking about Moabite, Moabite, Canaanite, talking about more. What are we talking about here? We're talking about Atlantean. And it is a curious fact that Columbus had the antediluvian world in his mind. Even then, for when he reached the mouth of the Orinoco, he thought it was the river Gihon that flowed out of paradise and he rode home to Spain. There are here great indications suggesting the proximity of the earthly paradise, for not only does it correspond in mathematical position with the opinions of the holy and learned theologians, but all other signs concur to make it probable. Columbus letting you know, when he reached the Orinoco, he had reached close to Garden of Eden. It had to be, he said, it had to be. Sanconiaton claims that the learning of Egypt, Greece, and Judea was derived from the Phoenicians. It would appear probable that while other races represent the conquest of or colonizations of Atlantis, the Phoenicians succeeded to their arts, sciences, and especially their commercial supremacy, and hence the close resemblances which we have found to exist between the Hebrews, a branch of the Phoenician stock, and the people of America. All right, so we're done with this chapter. Just wanted to get a little reference of that for you all right so before i continue with procopius because i just want to make sure we understand what we're reading when we're reading things from people certain specific people this is not wikipedia right so the encyclopedia britannica tells us that procopius is a byzantine historian all right procopius born probably between 490 and 507 in Caesarea, Palestine, now Israel, died in 565, Byzantine historian whose works are an indispensable source for his period and contain much geographical information. Britannica Encyclopedia right here is telling you straight up. It's an indispensable source. Look up who Procopius is. All right, I just wanted you to know. All right, so I wanted to read to you what Procopius said, All right, the part he's talking about. So I went straight to the book, all right? Now, it's called The Wars of Justinian. So, again, Procopius has a whole series of books. All right, so I start again right here. Let me just zoom in a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'll start right here where it says, As. As the narration of events has now brought me to this point, it is necessary to go back and explain from where the nations of the Moors came to Libya. Where did these nations of the Moors came to Libya? How did they get to Libya? I thought they were always there. I thought they were always there. So they came to Libya and how they settled there. All right. When the Hebrews, now this is Procopius, this is his own words. 
when the Hebrews had left Egypt and had come near the boundaries of Palestine, Moses, a wise man who led them on the journey, died. And the leadership passed to who? To Joshua, Jehoshua, Deuteronomy 34, right? The, the death of Moses. The power went to Jehoshua, Jehoashi. He led the Israelites into Jerusalem with the sword, not on a donkey, right? Saying peace to everybody. He took over, assigned by Moses and Hawa, right? He took over the son of Nun. The son of Nun is Nun a person? Nun is the letter N in Paleo Hebrew. Nun means heir, son, continuity. Heir, the son, heir, the heir, Joshua, the heir who led this people into Palestine, who led his people into Palestine, dodged the hijack, talking about the true old world, by displaying a valor in war greater than it's natural for a man. All right. He displayed so much valor in war that it was like, like, like impossible, like a miracle, like he was being helped. And he was, he was being held by Hawa, the most high, regain his land for his people. All right. By displaying valor and war greater than is natural for a man, he gained possession of the land. After overthrowing all the nations, he easily won the cities and seemed to be altogether invincible. He was invincible. They couldn't mess with Jahawashi. It's a cult. The priest king, they couldn't mess with. He was invincible. Now, at that time, the whole country along the sea from Sidon, as far as the boundaries of Egypt, was called Phoenicia talking about america all right it was called phoenicia it was also called the land of canaan same place right in ancient times one king ruled over it as is agreed by all who have written the earliest accounts of the phoenicians in that country there lived the very populous tribes the gergersites the jebusites and some with other names by which they are called in the history of the hebrews all right so you see these Phoenicians that keep getting, they're just a group of people. Two of those tribes are the Jergesites and Jebusites. We know that Joshua, right, when he got to Canaan or, or Jerusalem, the original Jerusalem, right, promised land, there was Jebusites there, Canaanite Jebusites there that he had to dr drive out. Giant Jebusites, all right. So they're telling you straight up. They're telling you straight up, straight up. These are Moors. They're telling you straight up. Procopius is telling you straight up here. These were Moors. These were their land. This is who Joshua drove out. Some of the tribes. When this people then saw that the invading general was irresistible, they couldn't mess with Joshua. They emigrated from their ancestral homes and moved to Egypt. They moved to Egypt. Hmm, are we talking about Tamari? I was just talking about just another part of America to marry, which adjoined their country, which was next to their country. Yes, they were. Yes, they were talking about to marry, to marry, finding there no place sufficient for them to live in. Given that there has been a great population in Egypt from ancient times, since there was no room there next to them, so many nations already there, right in America, they proceeded to Libya. They established numerous cities and took possession of the whole of Libya as far as the pillars of Heracles. And they have lived there even up to my time using the Phoenician tongue. Straight up letting you know that these so-called Moors, right? He's saying the Moors, the nations of the Moors that were in Libya at his time, 500 AD or BC, whatever. All right. These are all Phoenicians that got driven out by Joshua. All right, another source, right? Telling you straight up. These were Phoenicians, and they even spoke the Phoenician tongue or Paleo Hebrew. We are they who fled from before the face of Joshua, the robber, the son of Nun, the robber. So now Joshua became the robber. They were.